Well guys, I'm about to do my first container load. Uh, they got a crane here. They're getting ready to get it set up to get me loaded here. And uh, one of those 20 foot containers is what will be going on my trailer. Um, never done a, a container before yet, so it'll be interesting uh, to see how this goes. It is paying pretty good. I think it's around $3 a mile or so. So uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. So much for my first container load, I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, trailer is empty. <laughs> the crane had uh, some kind of scaling device in it, so he knows exactly how much he is uh, lifting up. And uh, that container was about 13,000 pounds. All I can scale with this truck is 10,000 uh, non-CDL. Even though I have a CDL now, this is still a non-CDL setup, so unfortunately. I couldn't take it. Uh, I put it on my trailer, took it right back off, and uh, I'm back to uh, looking for something else right now. I'm in Ellensburg, so uh, that's only two hours or so to go to Seattle from here. And there's actually there's always containers over there going back to the east side. So maybe I'll uh, I'll still end up doing a container after all, or maybe I'll find something else. We'll see what's on the load board. So my cell service wasn't working very well out here. Um, I couldn't get the low board to pull up right now so I'm driving closer to Ellensburg where I have service again and uh, hopefully I can still get something good uh, for today. We'll see. Turn right onto Southwest Nodderland Drive. Well, well, guys, look at that view behind me. I'm on the Oregon coast in Newport. Um, after that uh, container load canceled on me, I uh, found a place to park somewhere and uh, got on my computer, started looking for loads. I called on this load I have on the back of the trailer right now. I'll show it to you guys in a second that I'm dropping off right here in Newport. In 800 feet, turn right onto Southwest Bay Street. Posted for uh, pick up the next day uh, for Friday it was a Thursday um, I called on it there was the only load that was somewhat close to where I was and I was posted at a good rate and uh, they called the shipper back and after a little while they got back to me and told me it actually could be picked up the, that same day so I picked that up yesterday drove uh, almost out to Newport here and uh, I got away just a little bit longer they're open at 8 it's I don't know, 7.30 or so right now. I'm, I'm almost at the destination. I just pulled off right here because it's such a beautiful spot. So uh, I think I'll show it to you guys real quick and show you the load I got on my trailer and then we'll go drop it off. And uh, I already have two partials booked uh, from Portland. So it's just about two hours from here or so. Going back towards uh, Idaho and Eastern Washington. So it will take me right back to home and then I can drop them off 
on um, Monday morning and then I already have another load lined up for Monday picking up in Spokane so it's actually working out much better than if I had taken this container load down to Boise so um, yeah I'll show you guys the load real quick and then uh, I gotta hit the road and go drop this out look at that view here what a beautiful morning it's actually been raining all day yesterday on my drive coming over from uh, Yakima is where I picked this load up and coming down here to the Oregon coast and you can still see it's wet it's raining last night too but what a beautiful view here that's the cool part about hot shot trucking is you get to go some pretty cool places uh, it was a slow drive here small little roads very windy kind of hard was a heavy load on the trailer but uh, this is what I picked up there's a couple more parts in the, in the pickup truck bed as well, some hoses and miscellaneous stuff that went along with it. I guess it's a boiler and it's going to some kind of seafood place right here in, uh, in Newport. So this is the main boiler, about 7,000 pounds they told me and another 1,000 pounds or so for this other thing and some hoses and fittings and whatnot. I don't even know what the second one is for but uh, I don't know, a free tank or something, it goes with it. But yeah, it's almost, uh, they're almost opening, it's almost 8 now, so um, I think I have to go down this sketchy little road going down the hill right here and it's right on uh, the bay front here, right, right on the water is where this place is, so hopefully I can make it down this road, it looks kind of, looks kind of sketchy going down there. Oh boy, what do we got on the trailer today? Um, this is probably my biggest load so far. So uh, yeah, I was able to still pick up a container. It's actually two 20 foot containers. Um, they're on my trailer right now. I'll go out and show it to you guys in a second. Uh, I wish I could have filmed picking these up. Um, it was kind of a last minute deal. They always have these containers available. So I didn't want to book it earlier in the day because I was hoping maybe I could still find uh, something better and book that instead so I waited kind of till the last minute and then booked this but then uh, it gets dark so early now these times uh, of the year so uh, I didn't film it plus they were kind of close pretty soon so I just kind of had to go in there quickly get loaded get out so um, I'll just show it to you guys here in a second uh, just sitting on my trailer it was kind of cool uh, watching them load it because they have this big uh, it's kind of like a forklift except it lifts it, uh, it lifts the containers from the top but maybe if I do another one again I'll uh, I'll try and film it next time but uh, yeah they do they're always available and they pay pretty good uh, about two dollars a mile I think on these um, they're not going very far but they're kind of local for me Tacoma Washington uh, to Post Falls Idaho and I kind of live right in the middle so uh, um, I was actually able to stop back by home last night and uh, sleep in my own bed which is always nice so uh, yeah I'll go out and show the container to you guys and then uh, I'll go back in and uh, see what kind of mileage I've gotten so far I'm uh, well, a little over halfway to the delivery location right now uh, it's a little windy out but hopefully you guys can hear me okay here we are these are two 20 foot containers my trailer is only 36 foot long so two 20s would be 40 so what I did uh, so I put some flanking on the back which makes it totally illegal you can have up to four foot of overhang and that is fine so you got some flagging right there then I got a chains on the back here to hold it down uh, make sure this doesn't move at all the rest of it is just straps if it was one full length 40 foot container I would have put uh, chains on the front and the back but if I didn't miss this then they'd be pulling up against each other and then it could technically it could lift it up a little in the middle here because I wouldn't want that to happen so I'd have to put more chains in the middle and then that would just be a mess with too many chains with I've seen many people just hold these with only straps anyway, so I think that's fine. But uh, yeah, this is it. It's really windy, so I don't know how well you can hear me right now. So uh, I'll jump back in the truck and uh, I'll 
I'll show you guys the MPT that I'm getting with this load so right now. When I uh, picked up these containers, right after I picked them up, I reset my fuel economy gauge meter thingy here. And uh, let me see if I can get a little closer so you can see better. There we go. So it's showing 7.7 .7 miles with this, this trip so far. This I'm probably about. 350 miles or so total and I'm probably about 280 or so into it right now so for the last 280 miles according to the computer or whatever that calculates this I'm getting 7.7 .7 miles per gallon but unfortunately uh, this is a little optimistic I found out every time so far I have actually uh, calculated it by hand and compared it to what the computer is saying I'm always getting a little bit less than what it's saying like on my last trip it said I got 12.5 but I actually only got like 11.2 uh, I think or something so it's, it seems to be always a little bit higher um, when I'm actually driving you can see the bar up there and you can see how far up uh, it goes while you're driving and it hardly goes over 5 MPG so um, I really think I'm probably only getting about five to six miles per gallon uh, with this truck right now so now the big question is would I do it again um, it is pretty easy to get you know these containers loaded strap them down put some chains on it whatever um, it's not hard at all um, I don't have to tarp anything, anything like that. It's uh, it's not a hard load to secure at all. So as far as that goes, it's it's pretty quick and easy, grab and go. Um, but I can definitely feel that it's like having a big parachute behind you, uh, pulling this with a hotshot truck. Um, especially like the older your truck is, the, the worse it's going to be probably. Um, so definitely wouldn't recommend it if, you, if you're doing this with a really old truck. Um, but as far as for me, um, I don't think I would do it again with this truck. I'm really curious to see if I could do the same load again with my semi. Um, and see what kind of MPG I would be getting with the semi instead. Because I think it's going to be about the same, maybe maybe even a little bit better actually. So I'm, I'm really curious to see that. So. I probably will once uh, once I get that uh, truck up and running and the tra trailer is all good to go and everything I'll probably do this load again and uh, that one doesn't have a computer to calculate it so I'd have to calculate it by hand but uh, I think it's gonna be around the same if not maybe a little better this leads me to my conclusion that it doesn't really make sense to do containers with a hotshot um, just the miles per gallon just really sucks um, you really you literally could get the same or better as a semi I think um, we'll, we'll see when I test it out but I don't really think it makes sense for a hotshot to do this you're really you're really working the truck hard um, it really is like pulling a parachute behind you um, it is not so much the weight it is right around 10,000 pounds I've had many other loads on my trailer that were right around 10,000 pounds and I was still getting around 10 miles per gallon um, just because they were low loads they were like steel beams or something um, that were only about a foot or two uh, high from the deck but they weighed about the same as this so it's, uh, it's, not so, it's really not much about the weight when it comes to MPGs um, it's all about how tall the load is and if it's aerodynamic or not I've had a, a box truck on here as well and I've had an ambulance on here and they're all they're all pretty big uh, pretty tall but I did get better mileage just because it's a little more aerodynamic and uh, they were also weighing around close to 10,000 so um, yeah I guess my conclusion is uh, it is pretty easy to do but I think it's too much wear and tear on the truck um, you're really stressing it especially in the area where I'm working I have to go across Snoqualmie Pass and there's lots of hills um, all the way from point A to B um, if you are doing this 
all on the flatlands, then uh, I probably wouldn't be that bad. Maybe actually would get a little better MPG as well. But for me, there's lots of driving through hills and mountains. So, yeah. Um, I am really curious though to do this with my semi truck and I do think it would make a lot more sense to do it with a semi So it's a relatively light load uh, For a semi so it, it should be a pretty easy load I think to do it with a semi truck, but uh, Yeah, hopefully there'll, there'll be another video coming up uh, On that and uh, I'll compare the two So yeah, thanks for watching And uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I'll try and keep the videos coming Thank you.